Hello and welcome to Moments with the Master for this 10th day of June 2022. I am Father Josh the Egg Friar from St. Mark's Celtic Catholic Church in Concord, North Carolina. Um, begin with an apology. So the last couple of weeks I've had to change where I've been staying um, when I'm down in Sumter uh, working and that place doesn't have Wi-Fi. And so I've been trying to figure out that whole Wi-Fi situation, but the short thing is it's just been a little difficult for me to be consistent. So I'm trying to upload things as I can or when I'm home on the weekends, um, but hopefully I can get that figured out and get back into it. Uh, secondly, um, if you're listening to this and you um, feel like praying for me and my wife, we are going to Nashville next week to a church planting assessment with the hope of being able to partner with a an organization to be able to um, help plant the church. So uh, please just uh, throw up a prayer, um, preferably to St. Martin. Ask St. Martin to pray for us. I do every day. Anyway, uh, we're looking at the readings from Pentecost. Normally I'm with you on Mondays, but again, things. So Pentecost Sunday was this past Sunday, and the readings were Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Oddly enough, the Pentecost story. Uh, Psalm 104, 1 through 3, 25 and 30 through 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. And John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. As always, we encourage you to read all of these for yourselves. Um, I'm not really focusing on any of these particularly. Uh, the, um, the one from John, we just read a longer portion of that a few weeks ago. Um, these should all be pretty familiar. We read these or similar ones every year. Um, what I really wanted to lean into, well, first of all, let me do this. So in John, in the John passage, it's where Jesus appears uh, shortly after his resurrection. He appears there in the locked room. And at the end of the passage, he breathes on them and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So in that moment... To the people gathered in that room, um, the disciples is what it says. So certainly um, the ten, because Thomas wasn't there. Possibly um, some of the women, we don't know. But it says he breathes on them and tells them to receive the Holy Spirit. And then um, 40 days later or so, um, in Acts chapter 2, we have a much larger group in the upper room and they're praying um, and the Holy Spirit comes and tongues of fire and lands on their heads and they speak in various languages to the people in the area and a lot of people come to Christ. So when, when we talk about the coming of the Holy Spirit, um, normally we talk about the Acts passage but it was not until actually this year as I was reading the passage from John, I was like, well, Jesus gives the Holy Spirit to the disciples weeks before Pentecost. So the question is, first of all, it just, as an aside, not an aside, but like, what is the difference? And I think part of the difference is when Jesus specifically gives the um, breathe the Holy Spirit on the disciples, it is with an intent. Um, I am giving you, basically he is ordaining them as priests, and he gives them the authority to uh, forgive or retain sins and that whole thing. The, the second one is for a much larger group, and, is, um, and when they speak in tongues, it is to... Um, to share the gospel with the, the crowds that are there that day. And then as you read through the book of Acts, um, there is this coming of the Spirit, evidenced by speaking in tongues, that happens first with um, the disciples of John who didn't follow Jesus, then with the Samaritans, and then with the Gentiles. So it's uh, God seems to use this in Acts as a, an expanding, expanding circles of, hey, we're welcoming them in. Oh, yeah, we're welcoming them in as well. Oh, by the way, we're welcoming those people too. Hang on one second. I'm going to grab my water. So 
The thing that I really want to talk about, though, is what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? So I've, I grew up in Protestant churches. Um, Presbyterian, we were for, I was probably in fifth, sixth grade when um, we, no, 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 I was in seventh grade. When we left the Presbyterian church, which we had been in our, all our years, and my dad took a job at a Baptist church, and we were in Baptist church for a little bit, and then they started their ministry, and then we were in, they fell into the, um, not fell into, but um, it was actually one of the Presbyterian churches where my parents were first introduced to the charismatic movement, and then got, uh, were very involved with that for many years, and um, and so in many charismatic denominations, the, when you say filled with the Spirit, normally what that means is um, that you have, that it is a second blessing. Um, if you study the history of the charismatic movement, it is, that's what it is. They talk about a second blessing. And so um, you become a Christian, but then later um, the Holy Spirit comes on you and it is, without, almost without exception, there the evidence of that is speaking in tongues. And so, although they would say that the gifts of the Spirit are many, um, so the, the passage in uh, Corinthians talks about the many gifts of the Spirit, uh, uh, speaking in tongues and interpretation being two of them, but being filled with the Spirit, that that's what that means. Um, I don't think that we don't talk about that as Catholics or in most Protestant denominations don't talk about it that way. So, so there's a difference there. So what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? Um, well, that's a great question. And I would say, and I think this is borne out, in scripture and in church doctrine that you are filled with the spirit when you follow Jesus. Um, and so um, for everybody, even, even people like I was baptized as an infant, even people who are bad, who are baptized as infants, there still comes a point where they have to make their own decision to be followers. You, you, you have to choose for yourself at some point. Um, I don't know that that necessarily requires a, a separate or second baptism, like a water baptism, um, but it certainly is a decision, an act of your will to say, I am following Jesus, not because of the way I was raised or because my parents did it. I am doing it because this is what I know to be true and this is who I choose to follow. Um, but setting that aside, is it this big, momentous, like Jesus breathes on them and then they go fishing. And, um, and then there's that long thing. Now, after Pentecost, there is a definite and a massive change in the 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 followers of Jesus and there's clearly there's clearly something p behind the filling of the spirit hey I want to see our new uh this is um this is our new kitten say hello hello ow son of a gun she didn't want to be he didn't want to be held anymore um that was Cuthbert um so our new our new kitten who wanted to scratch me because he didn't want to be on the video. Anyway, so what is being filled with the Spirit? I would suggest that the filling of the Spirit has to do with what comes out. Like, I can say I'm filled with the Spirit, but unless I act, unless the... the, the, the because being... Because being filled means nothing if it doesn't pour out of me. So going back to Acts, they are filled with the Spirit, but what do they immediately do? They, they preach the gospel in all the languages of the people that are there in Jerusalem that day. 
there's something that happens as a result. It's not just something for me. And so much later in um, Galatians, Paul writes, talks about the fruits of the flesh, and then he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. In fact, let me just, let me, um, let me look that up real quick. So just, just hold with me real quickly. Uh, it's in Galatians 5, if you ever want to look it up. Um, but this, this is one of those passages that's really good to memorize. Um, I, I know the fruit of the Spirit side. Um, so here's what it says. He says, the sinful nature, the desires of your sinful nature. So if you, the fruit of sin, what comes out of you because of your sin? Sexual immorality. Well, that one's obvious. Impurity. That's not just talking about sex, but also lustful pleasures, idolatry, putting other things before God, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. So that is the fruit of the flesh. So that's what comes out. And it's obvious, or should be obvious, when someone is not following Jesus. Then he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things, there is no law. And that's what comes out when we, that's what being filled with the Spirit is. Being filled with the Spirit is having so much of the Holy Spirit in me that it flows out of me and touches people in the world. So there's just the reason that I really wanted to mention this, talk about this today, two things that really are hot on my mind. One is the recent um, report on the Southern Baptist Church and abuse, sex abuse um, in the Southern Baptist Convention um, and the people that worked hard to cover it up. These are people um, who claim to be filled with the Spirit but what comes out of them is the fruit of the flesh. And it is doing immeasurable damage to the kingdom of God. Um, not, not, not just now, but just think about the, the lives, uh, the, the tattered and shattered lives of so many people. And then um, last night, so this is uh, the 10th of June, so on the 9th, the evening, um, the, the January 6th committee um, presented the beginnings of their report on what happened on January 6th. Now, I don't want to get into a political argument about that, but and I didn't watch the whole thing. I've seen bits and pieces, and I've heard a lot of stuff about it. Um, one of the things that, one of the more um, shocking things to me was uh, the video that had never been seen before, a lot of the body cam footage from the Capitol Police officers. But setting that aside, I would say that a significant number of the people rioting that day and many of the people who went in with the intent of um, entering the Capitol building and doing what they did, I would bet that many of them would say that they were Christians. And I would also say that they did not display the fruit of the Spirit that day. Being filled with the Spirit is not about something I say or something I believe. I believe it's about, it's, I don't believe, it's about something we do. And it, the, the fruit of the Spirit in me ought to be obvious to other people. And that's all I got. Um, I pray that our that, that Christianity in our nation will become less and less about believing a certain set of th set of things and a, more about doing what the Holy Spirit, you know, displaying the fruit of the Spirit. So let's let's do that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.